Okay, now we're going to take a look at some graphs where the period is not 2 pi. All the previous example we've done so far, we've had the same period as 2 pi. Now, if you see a number in front of the x that's not a 1, that period is going to change. So let's go through and find this information first. Your amplitude is going to be the absolute value of 2, which is 2. Your period is 2 pi divided by the number in front of the x. It's not going to be 1 this time. The number in front of the x is actually going to be 1 half. So I have 2 pi divided by 1 half. If I work this out, 2 pi over 1 times 1 half, or reciprocal rather, so 2 over 1, you're going to get 4 pi. Okay, so 4 pi, that's twice as long as it was before. So what happens is, if you have a fraction in front of the x, that makes your period longer. If you have a regular number like a 2 or a 3, it's going to make your period shorter. In this case, because we're dividing by 1 half, we got, when we flip the fraction, you're actually multiplying by 2, which means that that makes the period twice as long as it was before. So now it's going to be 4 pi. Okay, now for the phase shift, we're still going to have a 0 in this case because we don't have any number after the x here. So once again, we do have a phase shift that's going to be 0. That means that 0 is going to be one of your initial key points. That's where your graph is going to begin. The graph always begins at your phase shift. Because your period is different, this is when you want to use the quarter point. So quarter point, again, just to review that. Quarter point is always going to be your period divided by 4 because these graphs we've been looking at, you always have you have five key points and it actually makes four different regions. So that's why you're always going to do your period divided by 4. This tells you all the different markings that's going to be on your graph. Period divided by 4 for our problem, 4 pi over 4, we get pi. So here's how you're going to write uh, your key points. So here we have the graph is going to look like this. And I want to find out what these four points are going to be, and that's why I'm using a quarter point here. The distance between here and here, that would be considered your quarter point. I want to find my, I know my starting point is going to be zero, that's my phase shift is zero, but I got to find out what the rest of these are. So how you do that is you start with zero, and you're just going to add the quarter point to it. I add pi, pi was my quarter point, and here it is, I get pi there. To find the next one, all you're going to do is add another pi to it. And so you get 2 pi, and then we add a pi again, and you get 3 pi, and add another pi, and you get 4 pi. Now, you don't have to necessarily show all this work on here. I'm just showing you that you can see where I'm getting these from. All I'm doing is I'm just adding pi all the way across here. 0 plus pi is pi. Pi plus pi is 2 pi. Add another one, I get 3 pi. Add another pi, I get, I get 4 pi. So there we go. We have this is all these are all our key points. The distance from 0 to 4 pi, that whole distance there, that is my period. So I can always take the last one, subtract the first number, I should always end up with my period there and I do. I get 4 pi. Now this is these are all the correct key points. The amplitude is 2, which means the graph is going to go up to 2 and go down to negative 2. We originally have a cosine graph talked about before, if you have a cosine, then you start the graph at the number that you have in front of the trig function. In this case, I have a 2 in front of the cosine, so my graph needs to start up here at 2. If that was a negative 2, I'd be starting it down here. If this was a sine graph, I'd be starting it right there on the x-axis, but cosine always has to start on the uh, amplitude itself, so that's a positive 2, we start there. Okay, so then the next one, it's going to go down to x-axis. It always alternates between your amplitude and your x-axis. So amplitude, x-axis, amplitude down here, x-axis, back up again to the amplitude. So the graph itself is going to look something like this. That would be one cycle. Again, it's asking you to do one period. So one period, again, it's the amount of time it takes the cycle to repeat itself. That would be one complete cycle. For this one, we notice again that there's a number that is not a 1 in front of the x. So if you have a number that's not a 1, we know that the period is not going to be our normal 2 pi. So I've got to find out what my new period is going to be. But first, we'll find amplitude. Amplitude is absolute value of 3, which is going to be 3. Now we're going to find the period. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by the number in front of the x. So 2 pi divided by pi uh, is going to be 2. Now your phase shift here is still going to be 0 because we have there's, uh, there's no number that comes after the x. So because of that, I know that my phase shift is going to be 
uh, zero. So zero divided by pi, zero divided by anything is going to be uh, zero. So next, we want to find out what each of these markings are. So on my graph, again, I have these kind of markings. The first one's always going to be your phase shift, so I have zero to start out with, but I have to find out what these other ones are, and that's, what I'm going to, that's why I'm going to use quarter point. Quarter point will tell you how far you are from here to here and here to here and so forth. So if I do my QP, my quarter point, that's going to be equal to my period, which is 2, divided by 4, because there's four pieces here, the period, quarter point's always divided by 4, and then we get a half. So one half means that's what I'm going to be adding to each of this all the way across to, to get these key points across the, the uh, x-axis here. So 0, if I add one half to it, I get one half. Now I'm going to add the, the key point again to get the next one. So one half plus one half, that brings me over to here, that's going to be a one. If I add one half to that, then I'm going to get three halves. One and one half would be three halves. If I add one half to this, I get four halves, which is the same thing as two. So these would be my new key points. I don't have any pies in these at all because it, the pi actually canceled out when I did my period. So my period should be a whole number. Also, if I take two minus zero, that whole distance there is going to be two. That's my period also. My amplitude is three, so I'll put three here and negative three down below there. And a sine graph, the sine graph always has to start on the x-axis. So I'm going to start it right there at zero, zero. If it was a cosine graph, I'd be starting it up here. But because it's a sine graph, sine graphs always begin on the x-axis. If it's positive, you're going to go up for the sine graph. If it's a negative sine graph, you're going to go down. This one's positive, so this key point we're going to go up to 3. Then we're going to go down to x-axis, back down to the amplitude, then back up to the x-axis again. And so this right here is going to be your finished one. This would be for one period, and that's all they're asking us to find would be for one period. That would be your finished graph.